Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to talk about Ramsdale and his situation at the club. Now if you want to look at a reaction for the Chelsea game, I haven't done one. I don't want to upset myself or even you guys any more than I already have. So if you want to see something similar to that, I recommend you watch my reaction to the Man City game because my opinion hasn't changed barely since that. And I think in terms of solutions and how I feel about the club, that is basically it. So please watch that if you feel like you want to see something like that. I'll leave a link in the description. Now moving back to the video, Ramsdale. Now he's a keeper which was expected to fill the void for Henderson, who was playing for us for two years on loan. Played very well for us, of course, got us promotion to the Premier League and kept us in there consistently in the second season as well. Since that, he's had success in being called up to England and has been playing for Man United in the League Cup and now made his debut in the Champions League as well. He's a player, in my opinion, where if he's given the opportunities, which he hasn't been done for England, as somehow Pickford's been chosen instead of him, and granted he takes those opportunities, he in the future become a world-class goalkeeper. That being said, it shows Ramsdale has big boots to fill in at the club. And if you look at the website called The 18, which did a review on the 23 keepers in the Premier League, he was rated 16th out of all 23. And if you look at the keepers that are included on that list, he beat Rab Tricio, Tom Heaton, and ironically, Jordan Pickford. <laughs> so... With all of that being said, I think it's very inaccurate and I would say even though Pickford's been terrible this season, all of those keepers are better than him, at least from what Ramsdale's shown for us this season. Now moving on to who we could have signed instead of Ramsdale, there were some links with some Turkish keepers. However, in my opinion, I think after doing some research, it seems that one of the main reasons we were linked with them was to try and negotiate with Bournemouth to lower the price to show we had other options and all our eggs weren't in one basket, which in the end it seems like they were. And in terms of if we did sign one of those keepers, we could have found ourselves in the same situation where he was low in confidence as well, especially being the Turkish league, might have not adapted to the league and we could have found ourselves asking the question why didn't we sign Ramsdale instead I personally think it was slightly panic buy I think there were better options out there but we saw that he was available and maybe the fact that Villa was sniffing around for him at the time made us want to buy him that bit quicker but in terms of other solutions I believe Romero for Man United was a better option yes he was on high wages so maybe that could have been a reason why we didn't go for him when you see the fact that he wasn't included in the Man United squad this season for their Premier League squad I think it shows it's a player which wasn't highly regarded by Man United so we could have got a low transfer fee and I think maybe the fact that he wanted to prove everyone wrong about why Man United should have chosen him more to prove why he maybe move his negotiation wage down and give us a decent spell in the Premier League. Now another keeper, one I think which is more crucial signing would have been Tim Krull. He's a player who is over 30 of course but when it comes to Premier League keepers and keepers in general you don't need to be that young. You know it's more about having experience so if anything maybe 30 or over is actually a good thing. He's a player which has proved himself many years now for Newcastle in the Dutch League and for Norwich last season as well in my opinion. He's a player typically I think where he's the sort of person you hate to play against whether it be as an opposition fan or a player and I think when he's on your team you love him and that's someone like Henderson for us as well last season the year before that. Granted a lot of opposition fans did actually like Henderson but that's because he's English and they want him to do well for England and be a successful keeper for us as a national team. I think Ramsdale being a player for us through the academy and being there while Wilder was for us at the start of his reign in 2016 was a big reason why he came back to the club. I can imagine Wilder liked what he saw with the player but due to our financial situation considering how we've been in the league one for a very long time I'm sure we had to let off some money and considering it was a player who hadn't played a single appearance in the league for us and only twice in the cup was probably a big reason why he had to get given the push. In terms of Ramsdale's professional career he's only made 89 appearances and that includes the two games in the FA Cup he made for us in 2016 moving on to Bournemouth when he was loaned out to Chesterfield where he made 19 appearances then after that where he played for Wimbledon and made 23 appearances 20 in the league and three in the FA Cup. He then went straight to the Premier League after playing League One which was a big risk by Eddie Howe. You could argue it paid off to some extent as he was a decent keeper for them but sadly not enough as they were relegated. I think the most worrying correlation for Ramsdale as a goalkeeper is that three seasons as a professional goalkeeper and in that time he finished bottom of the league with Chesterfield. He only stayed up once out of those three seasons and that was with Wimbledon where in fairness to him he joined in January and he got them out of the relegation zone and they stayed up on goal difference and then most recently last season with Bournemouth where he goes relegated on the last day of the season. In terms of how he did at Bournemouth though he did keep five clean sheets and two of them were against the fellow relegation team Teams, which were Norwich and Watford but more interestingly the other three clean sheets came against Man United, Chelsea and Tottenham. I think considering how this is only our second season in the Premier League and it's very known to have second season syndrome I think this is a big risk from us and so far it has definitely not paid off. I think this may be a controversial point but when it comes to being a goalkeeper it doesn't show the full picture when you're making a lot of saves when you're busy all the time because as long as you have a decent amount of confidence about you you are going to make saves because you're switched on what makes a great keeper is when they don't have any saves to make and then out of nowhere they have to make one save and put out the bag and no questions asked they make the save this is what in my opinion makes a world-class goalkeeper if you look at keepers in the past and present who have done that i think if you look at people like buffon neuer casillas and czech as well as many more those are sort of keepers where they do do that and don't get me wrong he's not going to be anywhere near 
consider that, especially at the moment, considering how to get a player like that caliber, you need to be spending probably about 50 to 60 million, unless they were on the way down and decline and very old, which would still require a lot of wages. And I think we just can't do that, which makes sense. And that's fair enough. However, with Bournemouth last season, he was making a lot of saves because they had a very poor defense and they're a relegated team. And when they did play, their strength was for attack rather than defense. So it meant that they were open and very exposed a lot at the back, which meant he had a lot of saves to make, which is why he probably also only kept five clean sheets. Now, in terms of keepers, which are a lower caliber of world class, would still be solid and do that for you. I'd say Tim Krull is on that list. And I think for, for Ramsdale, he's proved that he's a shot stopper this season in terms of when he played City, but he also proved he wasn't a solid keeper when he played against Chelsea. Now, at the same time, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying he's the only reason for our poor form this season. I think it's down to a lot of things and a lot of low confidence from everyone in the squad and everyone's played their part in being poor for us this year. Now, in terms of dominating the area, I don't think Ramsdale's on that at all for us, but neither did Henderson, in fairness. If he did ever try and clear the ball, it was with his fist. He'd ever really came out and caught the ball. I think in terms of the last keeper I've seen do that for us is probably Jamal Blackman and Simon Moore. So it has been a while since we've had a keeper who dominates his area, which is probably a dying breed these days because of the, they don't want the keepers to be filled out and muscly. Maybe it's to do with the fact they take too long to go and dive for the ball. But that does also come with its cons and you can't outstrengthen attackers and jump and go for the ball. I do believe, especially in our situation, you need someone with experience in this and he clearly doesn't have it. Fair enough, he's only had one season in the Premier League, so it's a lot of expectations on his shoulders and a lot of pressure as well. And he's only done at one time round and he was relegated when he did it so it's not the best of resumes for our situation i think if he continues with the form he's in i personally and this may raise a few eyebrows i think we just can't rely on him much longer and in terms of being a young lad he's not gonna have much confidence and it's really gonna shatter his performances and i think i'd like to see him be loaned up to the championship where he'd be with a more balanced team and i think if he was to do that we'd like to find an experienced keeper to replace him with for a season who maybe is the wrong side of 30 and possibly the season after if we were to stay up that we could then get ramsdale back depending on his form if he was to play badly for us to keep it go back in goal he was replacing him in the january window and if he did well ramsdale he'd obviously keep his place i think a closing point i'd like to finish on which is actually going to be a negative one is that jamie carragher's picked up on it and i did try to push back my brain to start off with this season but as the season's gone on i've just had to accept it especially after the chelsea game which is that he's very slow off his line when he makes a save he's almost going in slow motion i think against villa with the save where konza scored he did it against saiz with the header he did it and i don't think you could blame for him and his goal i think abraham's goal for chelsea on saturday he was suspect doing it as well i think even Werner's goal was hit with a lot of power but it was pretty close to his hand and didn't really stretch out enough for it like i mentioned it is also just one of many negatives at the club at the moment and i don't want to use him as a scapegoat because there is a lot of other problems with us at the moment i think one being lindstrom that he's just not in the right mindset anymore and we can't depend on a player who's head isn't with the future of the club anymore i don't want to get into that too much but that's going to be into the video guys i hope you enjoyed i know a lot of you won't disagree and i think he's still a decent keeper in there somewhere but in terms of how we're playing as a team and how his confidence is with us it's quite a long way off for now it's not impossible to get back to where he could and should be in the future which is in england possibly number one if dean henderson doesn't make it and number two if dean henderson does until next time guys we've got to keep the belief bottom of the league but up the blades come on and until next time guys take it easy